It worked. He came home. A lot of us don't don't know what Larry went through. Guys like I think about guys like Jack Stevens and Charlie Shepard that probably have a better idea than we do. People like Edie and like Mrs. McClendon that had to sit there and wait and wait for the letters to come and the brothers. Um, Peggy said that the helicopter in which he flew in Vietnam had a, a lead plate underneath his seat. And when he would get back from missions, his job was to drop smoke bombs so the big bombers would know where to drop their big bombs. So he was kind of close, right above the trees, and, and, and that took guts. And, and so they would look at the, the, 
the lead plate and all the other steel around it, and it would be just demolished, except for that square that he sat on. I can't imagine going back and doing it again after that. But um, So I want to bring up a quartet, and that is one of the newest Sweet Adeline quartets in the area. Uh, they've... I mentioned earlier that everyone that's going to sing has been coached by Larry. Well, these girls have been coached by Larry, just maybe not in this foursome yet. But they're a brand new quartet. They're going to be awesome. And they're called Foremost. Bring them up. substituting today for our tenor that is not here, so thank you Hilda very much. <laughs> They're just really good friends, and they're also really good friends of Larry and Peggy's. They're, they're, they're in that special inner, inner circle most of us only dream about. But <laughs> Jan and Marcy, June and Dale, mixed company. Larry would tell you, don't ever talk before you sing that. We have to. We've been singing together for almost 30 years, and whenever we get the words right one of these times, whenever there, was, whenever there was a party at Clemens House, we were included, and we were always asked to sing, and whether we had rehearsed or not, and I was always received with such grace. We love you. We love Larry. Thank you. <clears throat> Be a great day. When you're down and out, lift up your head and 
shout, there's going to be a great day. Angels in the sky promise to fire my, there's going to be a great day. area are in what's called Region 10. Region 10 had a competition a while back, and it was their international preliminary competition, and they called regional competition, and they had quite a few quartets qualified. I think there were four? Three. Well, two of them are here. And uh, this next group is... is they're, they're really good, they have that genetic blend, they're, they're young, and they have a lot of energy. And, and, uh, and they are going to Hawaii as a quartet for the very first time to represent Region 10, the international competition. Please welcome Essence!
story. You know, I thought about thinking of some funny stories about Larry, but there aren't very many funny stories about Larry, because Larry never did anything funny. He, everything he did had a purpose. But to us normal humanoids, those things are like funny, because we could never do them. Um, Larry had a way. Uh, you ever notice, those of you who got to meet and be around Larry on a regular basis, he was always too busy. He was always going somewhere. He always had, especially at barbershop conventions, he always had a meeting. And it was like not on the calendar, but there was a meeting, special secret meeting with Hank somewhere. And and and, and Peg was setting up for it, and so was Patty and, and, and Glenda. And it's like, where are these people going? I think it's just... To, where, to the bar, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but that was something I remembered about Larry. It just, when you had him in front of you, you and you needed to tell him something, you better say it in ten words or less, because he's got his man purse, and he's moving. <laughs> I was thankful when he finally got the kind of hearing aids that he didn't have to turn up and down. I don't know if you remember that. He turned them down a lot around me. All right, I want to share something with you. As you can see, as the family can see, Larry, Larry's influence was wide. And not everybody who wanted to be here is here. And We've got one of the best choruses in the world in Dallas called the Vocal Majority. And they were just torn apart that they couldn't be here. And so... Maybe they're here. So their director, Jim Clancy, and their director team and music staff put together a video last night at rehearsal for Larry. And it's ready now. No, but I thought it was really special that Mike, it was Mike Bortz and his team of folks that put it together and they emailed it to Brett and got it to us late last night. Late last night. Late last night. <laughs> and he, he was able to put it together. We get closer? Yes, ma'am. Um, some of the people that don't know, the Vocal Majority Chorus is a men's barbershop chapter in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And they, at one time, had, won well, they've won more gold medals than any other chorus in the world, um, men or women, I believe. They, they had, they have 10, 11 gold medals. And they're on this weird string of silvers. I don't understand that one, but but they they won the international gold medal, and I don't. I, somebody else should be telling this, but they won the gold medal, and then they. The story is that they got a silver medal. They lost to Louisville, right, or somebody like that. And back, like back in the late '70s, and Jim Clancy, whom you're about to hear from, said that'll never happen again. And they went on a string of nine in a row, and. Ten in a row. It's an interactive crowd. All right, we're ready. So we're going to roll the video. This is from the vocal majority to Larry. Dear Peggy, Clements family, friends, and loved ones of our wonderful friend Larry Clements. We just wanted to try to do something maybe that could help a little bit, maybe add a little bit of comfort, a little bit of solace in this time of such grief. Ever since we got the word, you have been in our thoughts and you've been in our prayers because Larry was a wonderful friend of ours. He, of all the judges, he was one that we knew we could trust. When we put in hundreds of man hours for trying to perfect song, if Larry was in the pit, we knew we would be judged fairly. But he was more than a wonderful judge. He was a wonderful friend. So maybe if this helps just a little bit. We've certainly done our job. We love you very much, and we know everything's going to be okay. Yes. <laughs> 
known the vocal majority are, are champions for more than just the gold medals. They represent our district and our, our hobby in a very good way. <clears throat> now, I want you to, uh, Jay, I want you to stand up, turn around, and just wave. Everybody say hi, Jay. Hi. He looks just like his dad. When you see those pictures when he was, when, when Larry was younger, you think it's Jay. And the older Jay gets, the more he's looking like Larry now. <laughs> Got that frown going. <laughs> I don't mean that. I don't look a thing like my dad. lovely wife, Heidi, but I want to tell you a story first. Many of you, I think it was here, many of you remember when Larry went all out for Peg's 50th birthday, it was like a year ago, and, and he hired a quartet, flew him in, put him up, and, uh, and it was then that his son Jay was engaged, and he couldn't wait to introduce everyone to Heather. 
And so he did, and then he realized quickly, oops, it's Heidi. That's the only mistake I've ever heard of Larry Clemens making his whole life. And it was a big one. She never let him live it down. But uh, I want you to meet Heidi Clemens. And Heidi is going to read you a letter. And brace yourselves because it's a love letter from Larry to Peggy. So Heidi... July of last year. And on the subject line, it just says a love letter. Okay, my dear Peg, there are days like today when I survey life. This has happened before, and I generally wind up feeling incredibly lucky to have you as my love, my life love and life partner. And as this has occurred again today, I ask myself, why I never tell you these feelings. And so this evening I tell you, I don't know whatever occurred in my life that brought us together, but I am so very thankful that we have each other. I truly do love you. Sometimes when I feel this way, there are songs that come to mind that seem to say how much I love you and how it came to be that we are together. Today, as I thought about loving you, some words to a song kept in my brain all day long. They are from a simple song called Nothing Comes From Nothing, from the, mu from the movie The Sound of Music. And here they are. Perhaps I had a wicked childhood Perhaps I had a miserable youth. But somewhere in my wicked, miserable past, there must have been a moment of truth. For here you are, standing there, loving me, whether or not you should. So somewhere in my youth or childhood, I must have done something good. Thank you for coming into my life, Larry. If you don't hurry, I'm going to get Justin up here. Or Robert or Eddie. Or... Uh, I have to tell you a story. It's because Justin is here with his wife Amy and Randy is here with Denise. Back, we spent a lot of time at Larry Clemens' house and it wasn't just working on music. It was like staining his deck to raise money for international. It takes a couple of weeks to stain that deck. And, and uh, we used to use the guest house for our rehearsal. And it wasn't because we were working with Larry. He was over, he was either out of town or he was working on his computer with Peggy in the other room. We just needed a place to, to go. And so we would go there. And he, he told us one time that, that you guys, uh, maybe you could clean the place after you're finished. <laughs> not, not like because we were dirty, but because that way he didn't have to hire the maid to come in because he might have somebody staying there that week. So be sure, you know, and so we would divide, the, you know, one guy would sweep, one guy would vacuum the bedroom. We can't walk on the bedroom after you vacuum. And so time it right with the cleaning, whoever's got the toilet duty that, that Monday night. And uh, <laughs> it went on like that for probably a couple of months, right, Randy? And then we got fired. <laughs> Because he, he got tired of having to go back on Tuesday morning and doing it all over again. Because we didn't do it right. Yeah, it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. And we thought we really tried to do that, but we just failed. And um, but but maybe 
maybe we're special because we've been together for like 16 years in some formation, and so Larry's had the longest opportunity to try to fix us. Then, <laughs> I guess Mixed Company's the only one that's been working longer than us. Uh, but this is the current formation of Sterling, and, and uh, we're going to share a song with you. Let you load up your plates again, hit the head, and uh, be back here in about 15 minutes. 